Wenceslaus was the son of Bratislav I, Duke of Bohemia. His grandfather, Borovoj I of Bohemia, was converted to Christianity by St. Cyril Methodius. His mother, Drahomira, was the daughter of a pagan tribal chief of the Haveli, but was baptized at the time of her marriage. His paternal grandmother, St. Ludmilla of Bohemia, saw to it that he was educated in the old Slavonic language and, at an early age, Wenceslaus was sent to the college at Budek. In 921, when Wenceslaus was about 13, his father died and his grandmother became regent. Jealous of the influence that Ludmilla welded over Wenceslaus, Drahomira arranged to have her killed. Ludmilla was at Petin Castle near Baron when assassins murdered her on the 15th of September, 921. She is said to have been strangled by them with her veil. She was at first buried in the church of St. Michael at Tetin, but her remains were later removed, probably by Wenceslaus, to the church of St. George in Prague, which had been built by his father. Draomiro then assumed the role of regent and immediately initiated measures against Christians. When Wenceslaus was 18, those Christian nobles who remained rebelled against Drahomira. The uprising was successful, and Drahomira was sent into exile in Budek. With the support of the nobles, Wenceslaus took control of the government. He reigned in the dependent dukes who had become restive under the regency and used Christianity to strengthen the state. Wenceslaus introduced German priests into his realm and favored the Latin rite instead of the old Slavonic, which had gone into disuse in many places for want of priests. He also founded a rotunda consecrated to St. Vitus at Prague Castle in Prague that was the basis of present-day St. Vitus Cathedral. In September 935, a group of nobles allied with Wenceslaus's younger brother, Boleslav, plotted to kill him. After Boleslav invited Wenceslaus to the celebration of the feats of Saints Cosmos and Damian in Strata Boleslav, three of Boleslav's companions, Tira, Sesta, and Nevesa, fell on the duke and stabbed him to death. As the duke fell, Boleslav ran him through with a lance. The mother, hearing of the murder of her son, found and placed his body in a recently consecrated church at the princely court. They were not able to wash off the blood splashed on the church doors, but after three days it disappeared by itself. After repenting of his sin, the murderer transferred the relics of St. Wenceslaus to Prague, where they were placed in the church of St. Vitus, which the martyr himself had constructed. The transfer of the relics of St. Wenceslaus is celebrated on March 4th. The memory of Prince Wenceslaus has been honored from of old in the Orthodox Church. The assassination of Wenceslaus has been characterized as an important turning point in early Bohemian history, as the rule of Boleslav I saw him renounce the Franks, centralize power in Bohemia, and expand the territory of the country. Wenceslaus was considered a martyr and saint immediately after his death, when a cult of Wenceslaus grew up in Bohemia and in England. Within a few decades, four biographies of him were in circulation. These hagiographies had a powerful influence on the High Middle Ages concept of the Rex Justus, Righteous King, a monarch whose power stems mainly from his great piety as well as his princely vigor. Referring approvingly to these hagiographies, the chronicler Cosmos of Prague, writing in about the year 119, states, But his deeds I think you know better than I could tell you. For, as is read in his passion, no one doubts that, rising every night from his noble bed, with bare feet and only one chamberlain, he went around to God's churches and gave alms generously to widows, orphans, those in prison, and afflicted by every difficulty, so much so that he was considered not a prince, but the father of all the wretched. Several centuries later, this legend was asserted as fact by Pope Pius II, who himself also walked ten miles barefoot in the ice and snow as an act of pious thanksgiving. The hymn St. Wenceslaus, or St. Wenceslaus Choral, is one of the oldest known Czech songs. Traceable to the 12th century AD, it is still among the most popular religious songs in the Bohemian lands. 
In 1918, at the founding of the modern Czechoslovakic state, the song was discussed as a possible choice for the national anthem. During the Nazi occupation, it was often played along with the Czech anthem. Wenceslaus's feast day is celebrated on September 28th. On this day, celebrations and pilgrimage are held in the city of Stara Vosilov, whereas the translation of his relics, which took place in 938, is commemorated on March 4th. An equestrian statue of St. Wenceslaus and other patrons of Bohemia, St. Albert, St. Ludmilla, St. Prokof, and St. Agnes of Bohemia, are located on Wenceslaus Square in Prague. His equestrian statue has figured in some key moments in recent Czech political history. It was at that monument to Wenceslaus that the proclamation declaring Czechoslovakia's independence was presented in 1918. It was also the site of historic demonstrations against Nazi occupation in 1939, the Soviet Union's takeover in 1948, an invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, and Communist Party rule during the Velvet Revolution in 1989. St. Wenceslaus Day is also Czech Statehood Day, a national holiday in the Czech Republic, and has been a public holiday since the year 2000. On this day, the Archbishop of Prague brings the skull of St. Wenceslaus and is paraded through the town of Stara Boleslav, where the saint was murdered. In recent year, Wenceslaus's feast day has been associated with a popular market and beer celebrations. The holiday also sees store closures throughout the country. The culmination of the celebrations of St. Wenceslaus is a solemn mass in the church of St. Wenceslaus in Stara Boleslav, or the St. Wenceslaus Cathedral. During this mass, the relics of St. Wenceslaus are exhibited, including the skull, on which rests a royal crown, a sign that he's the perpetual hereditary prince of the Czech lands. People repeatedly ask the saint in prayer for the intercession and protection of the Czech nation. Prayers can be summarized in the credo, St. Wenceslaus, do not let us and our descendants perish. Prague is still closely linked with the St. Wenceslaus tradition even today. The remains of the Czech prince are stored in the chapel of St. Vitus Cathedral, and one of the oldest vineyards, dating all the way back to the 10th century, bears the name St. Wenceslaus Vineyard. Many people are familiar with the Christmas carol, Good King Wenceslaus. Many of us know the first few lines, but I would like to invite everyone to read through all the lyrics. I will post them below. This carol does a fantastic job to summarize the behavior we should all exhibit as we celebrate the nativity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will post links to videos related to both St. Wenceslaus and the famous Christmas carol bearing his name. While I hope you found this video interesting, please consider giving it a thumbs up and perhaps subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. With my impending retirement, I plan on greatly expanding the content available on the channel, including podcasts of scripture commentary from the Church Fathers, book reviews, and additional videos on the lives of the saints along with some analysis of economic issues from an orthodox perspective. Thank you for watching this video and wishing you a blessed day.